This is an overview of the final steps in building your risk register. Now, to remind you of how we got here, we used a checklist exercise where we took your strategic objectives and we listed them down the left side of a table. And then we used a risk breakdown structure, such as this example from COSO or ISO 31000. And we listed the major risk categories and groupings across the top. We then evaluated the likelihood of each risk category occurring and the potential impact, if it did occur, of that risk category against each of the strategic objectives. Let's take a look at this analysis in a little bit more detail. So in this example, you can see that we have the customer perspective from the balance scorecard. The risk categories in this case have come from an ISO 31000 example. So we'll take a look at the customer grouping with the category of competition. And the team scored that with a likelihood of 3 out of 5 of occurring. They then calculated the impact in this example of 2 out of 5 on the impact of competition against profitable growth. Now, in the spreadsheet, what we then do is we multiply the likelihood by the weighting and that by the impact to create this little bar chart that you're seeing here. In other words, that bar chart, the relative length of it, shows you the relative risk that is occurring in the organization at that risk appraisal point. Now, what we can do is add that risk up across all the appraisal points or all the points where the risk category of competition touches the strategic objectives to give us the overall relative score. And in this case we're using a Harvey ball where the higher the risk the more the ball is colored in. So for example if we take a look at the internal grouping availability that has a three-quarters Harvey ball showing a fair amount of risk is accumulating across where that risk category touches the strategic objectives. We also have significant risk associated with capacity and over here under development. So this analysis begins to show us the risk categories that need to be covered off in more detail in our risk register. You'll then go off and interview your leadership team to find out what specific risks they can identify within those categories. Now, what we can also do is add up these risks by strategic objective. So, in this case, if we take a look at the strategic objective C3, quality product, and we add up across all the risks, and of course, I've just fold of the page here so we have 29 risks involved you can see it nets out to a fairly significant risk with a three-quarter Harvey ball. Likewise great service and continuous improvement are all strategic objectives that are at risk and therefore should have some coverage within your risk register. Again this is an additional trick to use to help surface where those risks may be. Finally, if we take a look at the big picture, we shrink this back down so we can see all 29 risks. Ignore the font. You can look to areas where there are larger bars, and those are the areas where, in fact, there are specific risks that we need to consider whether they should be surfaced in the risk register. So specific, in this case, uh, risk category appraisals that show significant risk occurring may trigger a conversation about additional risks. So that's how the risk category works as a tool to act as a catalyst to help leadership come up with the full spectrum of risks to consider. Now if you have an existing risk register we can use this to validate that register. So in this example I'm going to take a look where there's a significant risk by risk category and if it's covered off in the current risk register, then I'll give it a green arrow. So in these two examples, those two risks are already covered off. In this case, we've identified a risk category and there are no risks in this risk register that cover that category of risk. 
So we put a little red X there to remind us that we will now need to add a new risk into the risk register. So as this process continues, you'll find both overlaps and underlaps. Overlaps where the risk category identifies laps that are already in the register, and underlaps where there is an omission of a risk category and we need to consider what gets added in. You'll also discover some risks don't accumulate, risk categories don't accumulate enough points to be added in the register. And you may find there are risks in your register in that category, in which case we should obviously remove them because they're no longer risky enough. So we can take this work to build a refreshed risk register. What we'll do, again, is add in new risks we've identified and remove other risks that we no longer need to consider in the overall risk register. Now we have a risk register that's up to date and has been validated against some best practices so that allows us to now begin building the proper risk scatter diagrams and eventually a risk scorecard.